This section of chapter two is on chemical formulas. It actually looks at the symbols that we use to represent molecules, often sometimes called molecular formulas or even empirical formulas. This is just a brief introduction to the topic. We'll be discussing this in more detail throughout the rest of the semester. Many elements in the periodic chart actually exist as discrete individual atoms. An example of that would be helium. I can go out and actually find one atom of helium and isolate it. There are several other elements that exist as monatomic elements like argon, xenon, krypton, and many of the metals can be monatomic also. Some elements exist as molecules where atoms of the same element are actually connected together. We actually call that bonding. For example, hydrogen. It does not exist as a single hydrogen atom out there. It actually exists as two hydrogen atoms connected together. So that would be H2. Another example would be S8. It exists as eight sulfur atoms connected together. It does not exist as an individual sulfur atom most of the time. This lists some other examples of diatomic molecules of the same element, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine all exist as diatomic molecules. S8 is a polyatomic molecule. Ozone here, O3, exists with three oxygen atoms bound together. So you can see there are two different types of molecules for oxygen. And finally, in my list here, I have carbon listed as carbon-12. There are many different examples of carbon bound together. Notice that these molecules all contain the same element. There are many other molecules that contain different elements. For example, if I look down here at CH4, it contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. So two different elements. Water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom bound together, or two elements there. If we look at organic chemistry, there are many different elements. A lot of them, for example, methane, again, contains carbon and hydrogen. This molecule here contains two carbons, four hydrogens, and one oxygen. Those atoms are all bound together, so three different elements. Here is another molecule made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but it has more oxygen in it. It's a different molecule. And finally, in this list of organic molecules, I have six carbons, five hydrogens, one carbon, one oxygen, one nitrogen, and two hydrogens here. That is a molecule made up of four different elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Inorganic compounds also can exist as molecules of different elements. We've talked about water. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. Titanium oxide is titanium atoms and oxygen atoms bound together to form a molecule. Notice here I've represented the monatomic elements as a single sphere. The diatomic and polyatomic molecules are the same element as spheres sort of connected together. And also my molecules made out of different elements as sort of spheres connected together. That is just one way that we represent molecules. So let's now take a look at other ways to represent molecules. And we're going to call these, again, formulas. There are two basic types of formula in chemistry. One is a molecular formula, which just represents the atoms that are in my molecule or compound. So it lists the chemical symbol for each type of atom, and then it lists how many of those atoms are in my molecule. For example, S represents sulfur. Eight represents that there are eight of those sulfur atoms connected together. In methane here, I have carb C for carbon, H for hydrogen, and I have four 
hydrogens. That's my molecular formula. We also have something called structural formula, which gives us a little more information about how the atoms are actually connected together, sort of a three-dimensional view. And we have a number of those. We have balls and lines and sticks sort of connecting them all together. We have some structural formulas, what for now we're going to call line formulas, where I just connect the different atoms together with lines. And it does give you information in two dimensions of how they're connected together. We have the ball and stick type of structural formulas, which shows how we're connected together and some three-dimensional relationship between the atoms. You can see here in methane here, it's sort of represented as a tetrahedral-like structure. And the third example that I'm showing here is called space filling structural formulas, where I actually use spheres, and it's sort of each of these spheres sort of represents the electron cloud around each of the atoms and sort of how they are connected together. When we look at molecular formulas, we need to indicate the actual number of atoms for each element in a molecule compound. For example, if I look at the molecular formula for benzene, I can see that I have six carbons and six hydrogens. That's what the molecule actually, how it actually exists. There is something we call an empirical formula, which just lists the elements themselves in the lowest common denominator. So if I were to take C6H6 and divide by six, I get carbon and hydrogen. Another example is the molecular structure, molecular formula for acetic acid. Here I contain two carbons, four hydrogens and two oxygens. Notice I have a common denominator here. I could divide all this by two and that gives me my empirical formula. We only use empirical formulas when we're trying to figure out what a molecule is. We really want to represent the molecule by its full molecular formula. But you'll find out why we use these empirical formulas sometimes in organic chemistry. The structural formulas are intended to give us some information of how the atoms are connected together. So if I just look at the molecular formula for a molecule that contains two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, they could actually be connected together differently. If they're connected differently, we actually call those molecules structural isomers of each other. For example, if I look at this molecule, this is actually acetic acid. Notice that the two carbons are actually connected together here. There is another molecule that contains the same exact molecular formula, but the atoms are connected differently. This one happens to be methylformate, where the carbon is connected to oxygen and then connected to carbon. These are two different molecules. So if I told you that we had a molecule that contained two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, that is not a not if enough information to tell you what the compound is. You need to have this structural information. So we call these two molecules, same formula, different connectivity. We call these structural isomers of each other. When you take organic chemistry, we're also going to call those constitutional isomers. It's a British term that is being used more and more often. Notice that the properties of these two structural isomers are much different from each other. So they have the same molecular formula. They're both colorless. Actually, one smells like vinegar and one's very pleasant odor. Their densities are quite different. Their melting points are extremely different. One melts at 17 degrees centigrade. The other melts at minus 100 degrees Celsius. Their boiling points are quite different. One is soluble in water. One is only 30% soluble. And the vapor pressure, how volatile they are, are much different. It's based on how much millimeters of mercury their vapor pressure is. Different compounds, structural isomers. Another type of isomer, 
molecules that have the same molecular formula is called a spatial isomer. That is actually where the orientation of the molecule is different in space. They're still connected to all the atoms the same way. An example of that is R-carvone and S-carvone. We'll learn more about how we name these molecules when you take organic chemistry. But for now, these two molecules, they contain the exact same molecular formula, 10 carbons, 14 hydrogens, and two oxygens. The only difference between the two is how they're oriented in space. Notice on our carbone, this oxygen is pointing to the left, and on this S carbone, it's actually pointing to the right. I actually, if I sort of twist these molecules around, they're non-superimposable mirror images of each other. If I put a mirror plane down right between them, they'd be mirror images of each other. Again, we'll learn a lot more about this in organic chemistry. This is just sort of to introduce the concept of spatial isomers, but they do have very different physical and chemical properties. R. carvone actually smells like spearmint. S. carvone actually smells like caraway. So they have some of the same physical properties, but they behave very different biologically smell being a biological characteristic. Notice that we've drawn some wedges and some dashed lines here. In addition to drawing just straight lines, which says they're in the plane of the board, we can also represent atoms as going out of the board or st sticking into the board by using either these dashed lines or these darkened in wedges. Just another way to th represent the molecular formulas in a three-dimensional way. So what are these connections between atoms? These lines, these lines between different carbon atoms here. This line, two lines between oxygen and this carbon atom. We'll discuss that in the next.